Hello kids, in our previous class, we traced the journey of rice from the farm to our homes. Now let us see how we get the wheat for our chapatis and even bread which is the main food for many people. You know, wheat is currently the second to the rice as the main human food crop. We already know the chapatis and bread are made from wheat. The flour obtained from the wheat grains is used for making chapatis, bread, etc. The farmers produce crops like wheat from which we get the wheat flour to make the chapati and even bread. Many steps are involved before the wheat crop reaches our home as the flour to make chapatis. And you know all of those methods are kinds of separation methods. Let us see what all needs to be done to the wheat crop before it reaches a plate in form of chapati or bread. And you know all these are carried out even by simple villagers not necessarily in the big factories as we might think. If you ever visit a village you will know how 100 years old separation methods are still supplying us food to live. So let us see a farmer getting wheat grains out of the wheat crop from the fields. When the crop is ready, the stalk as well as the wheat kernels become hard and brown and the farmer reaps the harvest, that is, the crop is cut. As we see, the wheat grains are still attached to the stalk, so the grain has to be separated from the stalk. Each stalk has many grains attached to it. Imagine the number of grain seeds in hundreds of bundles of stalks lying in the field. How does the farmer separate grain seeds from those bundles of the stalks? The stalks of wheat are beaten on the hard ground to separate the grains from it. Thus the wheat grains are separated from the stalks. But what do farmers do with the wheat stalks after separating the grains from it? The stalk has many uses. It can be used as a fuel. It is also fed to animals in small quantities as roughage. Apart from these, you know, they are also used to make the thatched or sloping roof of the houses which are generally kacha houses. So we see, separation can also be used to separate two useful things. Here, the separation was done because the stalk and the wheat kernels are used for different purposes. So, they have to be separated. Can we obtain wheat flour from the grains separated from the stalks? No. As we saw in the case of rice, each rice grain has a dry scaly protective casing called hull or chaff which is inedible for the humans. Same way, each wheat grain also has an inedible protective casing called chaff or husk. Though minor differences are there in common usage, hull, chaff, or husk are interchangeable. You know, due to the beating of the wheat stalks on the ground, not only the grain gets separated from the stalk, but the outer covering of each grain, that is chaff, may also get loosened. Now, the chaff and dust is still mixed with grain. So, the mixture consists of the heavier wheat grains and the lighter chaff and dust. So, by wind or by blowing air, the lighter chaff and dust can be removed. How is the air blown for this? Is a fan necessary for it? No. The farmers use a simple method. The farmer stands on a raised platform and takes the mixture of chaff and grain in a plate or paper sheet. Then he holds the sheet or plate at a shoulder height and starts tilting it. The heavy grains fall right near his feet but the lighter chaff gets carried away by wind to a little distance. So, separate piles of lighter chaff and the heavier wheat grains are formed. The wheat grain is further processed. And what about the chaff? Is that thrown away? No, the chaff is also used as livestock fodder in the farms. It can also be used as fertilizer. Now, the wheat grain has to be ground to make flour because flour is like powder. In villages, simple grinder made of stone with wooden handle called chakki is used for grinding wheat to flour. So is the flour ready to be used for chapatis? Wait, the flour may contain some impurities like pebbles and other substances. But 
it would be difficult to pick them using hands. So, instead we use a sieve with small holes which allow the fine particles of the flour to pass through and the larger pebbles etc remain behind. You must have seen your mother separating impurities from the flour using a sieve. After that, the flour is ready to be used to make soft chapatis or bread. Mmm, it is so tasty. Thus, through many separation methods, the wheat grains from the farm reach our plates as our important food, chapatis and bread. In summary, let us see those separation methods in short. First, the farmer separated wheat grains from the stalk by beating the stalks to the ground. This method is called thrashing. Then the farmer separated dust and the loosened chaff or husk from the grain. This process is called winnowing. The wheat flour is obtained by grinding the wheat grains. There can be few impurities in that flour. Very small flour particles pass through the sieve but the impurities are left behind. This separation method as the name suggests is called sieving. So now you know using so many separation techniques the wheat from the farm reaches a home ready to be used in various dishes. We discussed just one of the many ways which are used by different people. Many people follow other techniques too. Also, nowadays even machines are used for all the separation techniques. For example, a wheat thrasher is used. Instead of manually grinding the wheat grains to get flour, a wheat milling machine may be used. If we talk about bread, at times you might wonder what is white bread or brown bread and what is the difference between the two. As we saw in the case of rice, once the inedible chaff is removed, bran is the next layer or covering of the rice. The brown rice is actually the white rice covered with the bran. And when the bran is removed from the rice grain, we get the white rice. Same way, in the case of brown bread, the whole wheat flour is used. That is, the flour made from the whole grains of the wheat. It contains all the part of wheat grain including the outer layer of bran and another layer called germ 2 which is high in vitamins, minerals and proteins. The whole wheat flour is also called atta. Now coming to white bread. In terms of taste and texture, white bread is softer and tastier than the brown bread. This is because bran and even germ is not included in the white bread. So. It has just the proteins and carbohydrates. So what is roti or chapati made of? It is also the whole grain wheat flour which we also call atta. While naan, pastries and other bakery items such as white bread, biscuits, toast are made of maida flour which is a finely milled wheat flour excluding the bran and the germ which are healthier part of the wheat grain. So now you know brown bread and rotis or chapatis are healthier than the white bread and the naans. That was all for today. Bye bye kids.